welcome. We're glad to have you here with us on Christmas Eve. This is our traditional Christmas Eve service. You also have an option of seeing our family-friendly service, which you may, you're welcome to watch both, certainly. Um, so there are two online options for you this Christmas Eve. Also, um, just a reminder to get a candle ready so that you can light a candle during our candle lighting, uh, during that part of our liturgy, and also get your bread and wine ready because we will be communing at the end of the service and we want you to be able to join in with us. I have to say about a million thank yous. First of all, to uh, David, Carol, and Craig, who are here helping um, this, helping to tape this service and, and to prepare you and your hearts and spirits for Christmas. But also, we got here, and this is so 2020, uh, we got here and the sound system was not working, and, it, it, well, it was working a little too well. It was making horrible, horrible noises if you walked in the altar area. And uh, also, the candles would not light. Our brand new candles that had just been loaded into our candle operas. And so... Oh, wait, um, wait, wait, don't forget, and there's no heat. And there's no heat right now. So this is this has been... We, we started, uh, we wanted to tape at 5.30. It's now like 9.00. 12 or so. No, it's not, but it's like an hour and a half in, and we're finally able to start Katie. I want to thank Phil Horlocker, who came and helped us figure both of those both of those big problems out. We still have no heat, but uh, the rest of the rest is working, and we I want to thank him for doing that. There are so many people that made the decorations in the sanctuary possible. I don't want to start thanking naming names because I know I'll forget someone. But um, if you were here and helped with that, I know there were many people over the last couple of weeks that have helped to decorate the tree, put up the candelabra. Uh, Carol came this afternoon and, and we put out the poinsettias. So, so many people have made this possible. And thank you to all of you for everything you've done. Um, and I just, I'm so grateful for everyone pitching in to make this happen this year. I, um, I believe that those are all of our announcements except for um, Christmas Eve. If you would like to be here with us, we'll be out in the parking lot. Uh, Carol, David, and I will be wearing our mukluks and our everything to keep warm. You guys can stay in your cars and be warm, but we will uh, be up front and, and leading worship. It will be a brief service, but we will have key communion together, and we also will have um, we'll sing Silent Night, and uh, you'll get a glow stick, and you can get out of your car if you like, and we'll make a socially distanced circle, and or at least an attempt at one, and we'll um, celebrate at least a little bit of what Christmas should normally be. Um, so feel free to come and be a part of that. Remember your mask if you're going to get out of your car and you don't have to bring, you, you can bring your own bread and wine if you want, but we will have um, our individualized packets ready to go. I believe those are all of our announcements. So at this time, I invite you to join with me as we worship God Almighty. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us and who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Amen.
we come tonight to hear the story of God's love cradled in the manger. We come out of the deep night to see the light of Christ transform the world. As we light the first Advent candle, we set aside our worries and cast our eyes on the promise of hope that redeems us, renews us, renames us, and grabs us into the story of love that came down for you, me, and all the world. Come, let us worship. In winter's deepest night, we welcome the light of Christ of the Christ child. Isaiah declares the light of the long-promised king will illumine the world and bring endless peace and justice. Paul reminds us that the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, brings salvation to all people. The angels declare that Jesus' birth is good and joyful news for everyone, including lowly shepherds. Filled with the light that shines in our lives, we go forth to share the light of Christ with the whole world. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather in this place because we know something extraordinary happened in the most ordinary of ways. Open our eyes to be enlightened by your love for us. Open our hearts to be stirred by the loneliness of our vision that seems too lofty to touch. Open our ears to hear your story once again and be moved to share it with the world. We come to see your light as you lighten our path. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who is and was and always will be. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we don't feel ready. We don't feel ready to forgive others who trespass as we have trespassed before others. We don't feel ready to share the good news of Christ's birth and salvation for the world. We don't feel ready to live into a new life that lets go of our broken pieces. Forgive us, O oh God. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. celebrate the forgiveness God has freely given before we even ask. Jesus' birth affirms the good news of the gospel, that this salvation is available for everyone. In the waters of baptism, We are redeemed and reminded that God is ready to take our broken pieces and to rename them as Christ's own. Hear the good news. You are forgiven. You are known. You are renamed. In Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel, for you have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. 
Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in the land of deep shadows, light, thunders of light, You repopulated the nation, you expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence. Festival joy, the joy of a great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. Light, sun bursts of light, the abuse of oppressors and cruelty of tyrants, all their whips and cudgels and purses is gone done away with. A deliverance as surprising and sudden as Gideon's old victory over Gideon. The boots of all those invading troops, along with their shirts soaked with innocent blood, will be piled in a heap and burn, a fire that will burn for days. For a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. Light, sunburst of light. He'll take over the running of the world. His name will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus' ruling authority will grow, and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. Jesus will rule from the historic throne of David, over that promised kingdom. Jesus will put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going with fair dealing and right living, beginning now and lasting always. The zeal of God will do all this. Thanks be to God. Friends, we come into this space with our hopes and our expectations. Expectations for how Jesus breaks through and turns the world upside down in the extraordinary ordinary of a manger. Expectations for celebrating Christmas the way we did a year or two years or 20 years ago. Hopes that our food will be delicious and our gifts will be accepted. As we come into this space, let us be reminded that our hope comes from Jesus and the worries of the world can wait for another day. Let us pray. Holy God, we come with hopes and expectations this night. Still our minds, quiet our fears and anxieties, and help us focus on your love cradled in a manger, turning everything upside down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The epistle reading lesson for today is found in the third chapter of Titus, verses 4 through 7. These beautiful words may well have been a liturgy or creed used in worship in the early church. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. From the beginning of the Gospel, St. Luke overturns the natural order of things. 
The Messiah is neither presented as a conquering hero in worldly terms, nor as someone who is heralded in the courts of the powerful. Jesus is to be witnessed and celebrated by the least, the last, and the lost. However, in the presence of the angels, the heavenly realm proclaims the incarnation of the one who will change and overturn everything for the better. Alleluia, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Alleluia. Listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, you O Christ. Christ. In those days a decree went out from Empress, Emperor Augustus and all that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those he favors. And when the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now into Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. May God bless the reading of this holy word and all those who hold it in their hearts. Amen. Amen. For our time with the children tonight, I'll be reading a book called Wherever You Are, my Love Will Find You. It's written by Nancy Till Tillman, and I think for all of us, not just for Jesus, but I think for all of us, this is how God felt when we were born, and how God feels about all of us. I wanted you more than you'll ever know, so I sent love to follow you wherever you go. It's high as you wish it. It's quick as an elf. You'll never outgrow it. It stretches itself. 
So climb any mountain, climb up to the sky, my love will find you. My love can fly. Make a big splash, go out on a limb, my love will find you, my love can swim. It never gets lost, never fades, never ends. If you're working or playing or sitting with friends, you can dance till you're dizzy. You can paint till you're blue. There's no place, not one, that my love can't find you. And if someday you're lonely, or you're, someday you're sad, or you strike out at baseball, or you think you've been bad, just lift up your, lift up your face. Feel the wind in your hair. That's me, my sweet baby. My love is right there. In the green of the grass, in the smell of the sea, in the clouds floating by at the top of a tree, in the sound crickets make at the end of the day, you are loved. You are loved. You are loved, they all say. My love is so high and so wide and so deep, it's always right there with you, even when you're asleep. So hold your head high, and don't be afraid to march to the front of your own parade. If you're still my small babe or you're all the way grown, my promise to you is you're never alone. You are my angel, my darling, my star, and my love will find you wherever you are. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. Holy and gracious God, even in the midst of 2020, even in the chaos, even in candles that don't work, and people who are so very ill, and even in the midst of the cold of a sanctuary, you're right here with us, so for that, we are forever grateful. Amen. Back in the late 80s, some of you have heard this story before, but I'm telling it again because it just is perfect for 2020. Back in the late 80s, for those of you who are young, I'm talking so last century. Craig's brother sent our daughters, he was a bachelor brother at the time, our daughter's jump ropes that wrapped. I'm talking the full, it was <laughs> with every hop, every skip, every jump. And our daughters were age five and three and they loved them. They loved them. They turned them on at every chance. And their parents did not. In fact, we hated them. Probably me more so because I was there every day, all day long, with the jump ropes. It took a long time for the batteries and those babies to run down, but I'm not ashamed to tell you right now that we told those sweet, innocent children of ours that Uncle Mark brought, bought those jump ropes in Minnesota and Pennsylvania batteries just wouldn't work in them. Truth is very important. Honesty is key, but parental sanity won the day. I think of those jump ropes every single year. The noise pollution that they brought into my life, the havoc that they created. I hated them. Hated them is even an inadequate word for how I felt about those jump ropes. 
And I imagine Mary might have felt the same if a little drummer boy really showed up at the manger. Think of poor Mary and the difficulties over which she had already triumphed. It must have been more than a tad chaotic there in the mean, there in that lowly stable. Did you know, by the way, that the little drummer boy is one of the most hated Christmas carols of all time? I sort of understand it. I mean, the little drummer boy brings the gift of Pahrumpa Pum Pum, and the song sort of drags the story out with lots of re repetition on the Pahrumpa Pum Pumming. But I ask you, what new mother wants a drummer drumming anywhere near her newborn? Much like those rapping jump ropes, drums do not a mother-approved gift make. And the thought of that stable can you just imagine? I'm a farm girl, and I have a good imagination, so it's not hard for me to imagine the horrific smells of a stable, all those animals in close, close proximity, and then a bunch of stinking shepherds straight from the field. Their stench probably made the rest of the barnyard smell flowery in comparison. Imagine the unending noise that night, the constant clucking and cooing and singing of birds. Let me tell you, we think of doves like they are pictured in our Christmas cards, but they're noisy. And not just them, but sheep and cows and at least one grain donkey. And then camels get added to the mix and camels, they're mean, they spit. I mean, I'm just saying that for all of our singing about silent nights and all the quiet little town of Bethlehem, that manger could not have possibly been either. And then to top it all off, a bunch of visitors just dropping in on the new family, angels and wise men showing up to join the fray. And you know, all that activity had to draw in some tourists. I can just hear one of the senses obeying young men saying, dude, that must be some party, let's go. Adding more people and more mayhem. The Bible doesn't really give us the true sense of the calamity that must have gone on that night. But we know that our God is the God of biggest surprises. God loves nothing more than to turn things upside down and make the unexpected and impossible possible. And Mary. She's been depicted over the years as meek and mild, but I disagree. Laurel Thatcher Ulrich once wrote, well-behaved women rarely make history. I'm not saying Mary was a bad girl, not by any stretch, although most of the town gossip certainly did. But what I'm saying is that Mary had to be made of pretty strong stuff. She watched with wondering eyes as God's plan unfolded around her. She didn't run screaming from the manger, which is probably what I would have done. She didn't whine or complain about the lowly accommodations, which is something else I know for sure I would have done. She didn't yell at Joseph to get these strangers out of her birthing room, no. Mary savored the moment. Mary treasured all, these, all of these things, and she pondered them in her heart. Mary gave, the, gave birth to the baby who was the light of the world, and in turn that baby became light for us. Richard Rohr says, Jesus was not God's plan B. Jesus was God's plan A. As Rohr explained, Jesus did not come to change the mind of God about humanity. Rather, Jesus came into the world to change the mind of humanity about God. And because of that noisy, chaotic night long ago, we, you and me, get to carry the light of the divine within us. My friends, go from this place and let your divine light shine. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>
believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Friends, joining our voices with the songs of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing, joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of the world at rest. May our wonder at your creation Rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing, Peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provisions for all in their care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mary sends melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting, especially those all in our those who we hold in our hearts those who we name aloud before you in our prayers. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Love sings through the sound of a newborn baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant, par expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. great. The heavenly chorus sings glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The word of the Lord, oh, the word is revealed in the manger, in simple bread and wine. Come meet Jesus, our brother and savior, in this meal. May the God of silent nights be with you. May the God of herald angels be with you. Open your hearts to the one born in the little town of Bethlehem. May Emmanuel come to abide in our hearts. Join all believers in singing of our joy this night. May our voices blend with those of the angels and the shepherds. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. On this night, when heaven reaches down to caress creation with healing, we join with the angel choirs who sang your glory, and with your people in every time and place, caroling the good news which is ours.
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem, and was despised and rejected. As your word became flesh, born of a woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And said to his disciples, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Lord has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come Lord again. Lord. And hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in the final victory and be feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Through this broken bread, Through this broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through this cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are now ready. As we prepare ourselves to receive this holy sacrament, we remember that we are part of the living body of Christ in the whole world, and we each come to this table with different needs, and we come in different ways. The bread represents our brokenness. So I ask you to partake when you are ready. When you eat of this bread, remember, it is the body of Christ broken for you and for me. Let the people say, Amen. 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 And as we partake of this cup of blessing, we acknowledge our unity in Christ. So please hold your cup and let us all partake as one. My friends, drink this, for it is the blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. May the body and blood of Jesus the Christ strengthen 
and preserve you, each one unto everlasting life. Amen. Let us give thanks. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We now come to a very special part of tonight's service. Even in this year of virtual, we can each light a candle and enjoy its glow. Especially in a pandemic, we can allow our collective lights to shine. Tonight, we have lit the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, the candle of love, and the Paschal candle. We have only one thing to say. Christ has finally come. Hope, peace, joy, and love have finally come. The darkness of Advent has passed. And the light of Christmas invites us into the warm glow of the completed Advent wreath. As we light this Christ candle, we sit in the knowing and affirming that Christ is here. Christ is now. Christ is with us. As Jesus the Christ comes bringing the light of God's love, we light our individual candles to signify our faith and our collective commitment to live as Christ's brothers and sisters in the world. I invite you to light your candles at home and lift them high. We remember, my friends, with fondness, other Christmas Eve services where we were surrounded in the light of all the candles here in our sanctuary. I ask you to imagine being in that moment right now. See the glow created in years past. We are confident that next year we will again be together here in this sacred space. If this year of uncertainty has taught us nothing else, it is that we will never again take these precious opportunities to, for granted. Friends, one candle is but a flicker, but together we create a bright flame of Christ's light in the world. Consider the beauty of our light shining together. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the hope of all our tomorrows. May we be witnesses of the light Christ brings. Amen. Amen. 